Hi everybody, this is Jonathan and I'm just going to talk to you for a few minutes about how to create your first function with Java and Maven. So what is a function and why do you care about it? The two things I really like about functions and serverless programming is that you don't have to pay for having a VM up all the time. You're only paying for the time in which your function is actually doing computations. And secondly, you don't have to deal with the maintenance of a full VM. You can offload that to the cloud, Azure, or whoever you choose to use, and they will handle all the underlying software and hardware, and you only have to worry about the implementation of your functions and how they interact with other services provided on your chosen cloud. So obviously today I'm going to be using Azure, and we're just going to follow through this tutorial. We're not going to use uh, the IDE, we're not going to use the Azure portal, we're just going to do it all from the command line. And we're of course going to do it in Java. So there's a number of prerequisites to uh, creating a Azure function with Java, and some of them seem a little bit odd to Java developers. Having .NET Core, the Azure CLI, and Node.js is a little bit strange, I admit. The reason why they exist and why they're required is because Azure Functions actually allows you to run a local host installation of Azure Functions Cloud. So you don't have to deploy to Azure itself until you're happy with your functions code. You can test it locally. So once you've got all of these installed, as well as the Azure Functions Core tools that is listed here, you can go ahead and you can use Maven to create an Azure Functions archetype. So let's copy this code and jump over to the terminal. I'm going to paste that in. And it's going to run in interactive mode. So it's going to ask me a few questions about how I want to configure my Azure functions. For the group ID, let's say net Jonathan Giles Azure functions. So this is the group ID. We're going to say the artifact ID is functions sample. Let's say we're happy with 1.0 snapshot as our version. The package is net Jonathan Giles Azure functions. That's fine as well. And the app name, that, that's fine. We can change the app name and that will change the URL if it's deployed to Azure itself. So for now, I'm happy with that. We'll deploy into the West US region. And so yes, let's create this archetype. All right, everything has now been configured and we can jump over to Finder and we can see it's created a get, get ignore host JSON, local settings JSON, a Maven POM, as well as the source code and test code. And if we drill into the packages, you can see there's a function.java file. And this is standard Java code with annotations provided from the Azure Functions API. So you can see there's a function name annotation and hello. This becomes the endpoint to access this function. You can see it's accessible using get and post and it's accessible uh, anonymously. You can see when this method is called, it tries to get a query parameter called name, and it also looks at the body. So it chooses to take the body, but if the body is not available, it will use the query parameter that we have in this line here for name. So if name is null, we're gonna return a message back saying, please pass a name on the query string or in the request body. But if the name is not null, we're gonna say hello, as well as the name that was provided to us. And we're just going to return that back with status code of 200 to show that it was successful. So let's go over and we'll run maven clean package azure functions run. Oh, sorry. I didn't go into the correct directory. So let's just do that again. So now we're cleaning, we're packaging and running the tests, and now we're running Azure Functions locally. So you can see here it's found hello, it's used reflection at runtime to find the one class that was generated in the sample, and it's told us the URL to access it is localhost 7071 slash API slash hello. And we can actually test that, we can load up a REST client like Insomnia, and we can create a new request, and let's call it hello, and we'll make it a get request. Let's create that and we'll pass in the URL, localhost 7071, API hello. And let's just send that without a query parameter or body. You can see in the background, this code has been triggered and we've got the response back that we expected. Please pass a name on the query string on the request body. So let's add a query parameter name and we'll just pass in my name, Jonathan. 
and we've seen that. And straight away, we've got a response, hello, Jonathan. And just to prove that we aren't doing anything dodgy, we'll go to our code again, and we'll change this to good day, sir, sir. And we'll save that, and we'll clean package and run that function. Now this is all running locally. This isn't running on the cloud at all. This is just on my development machine. Once that runs, we see we've got the same URL, so we can come back into Insomnia and we can send name Jonathan. Now the response is, good day, sir, Jonathan. All right, very good. So let's shut down the server. What we can do now is we can push this code up to Azure itself and we can say we're happy with this function. So that's Maven clean package Azure functions. And instead of saying run, we're going to say deploy. And so the first time we run this, it takes a little bit longer than usual because Azure is having to provision our new Azure functions service and then it's going to upload the files. So the first time, the whole provisioning takes a little bit longer. So what we're going to do is we're going to sit here and watch this happen. And then the next time, it's not going to have to work, do the, the uh, provisioning. So while that's happening, let's switch over to the Azure Functions documentation. And Azure Functions is really cool because not only does it trigger on HTTP requests, but it can trigger on a whole bunch of other uh, trigger points. So we can have it trigger on timers or GitHub webhooks if something changes in Azure Cosmos DB or a blob or a queue. So our functions can be the glue between multiple things happening inside Azure. And so this is all accessible using Java. Uh, we can do it all in our favorite IDEs like IntelliJ or Eclipse or Visual Studio Code. And there's of course language support for other platforms, C Sharp, Python, Go, Ruby, Node. So now we can see here that the function has been provisioned. Now it's zipping the package up. And it's, up, and it's uploading it into Azure. Now the first time we upload it, it does take a little bit longer, so it's simply because uh, the provisioning isn't immediate. So we're not going to go into Insomnia straight away, we're going to give it an extra few seconds just to allow it to complete the provisioning. Otherwise we're just going to see a no response. So if you want to learn more about Azure, you know, there's a lot to go, a lot to see just on this front page, azure.microsoft.com. One of my favorite tabs is the products tab. There is so much to see about all the different technologies that Azure offers uh, for databases and containers, but also exciting things like AI and cognitive services. Everyone can be an AI expert by leveraging what Microsoft offers for machine learning, chatbots, and just image recognition and computer vision. It's just a whole bunch of really cool stuff that Azure offers. If we come back over to the terminal, we can now see that this code has been deployed up into Azure. We can see that we've now been given a new URL here, and it's at HTTPS functions sample, and then the date time. This was the app name that we set right at the very beginning. You can see now it's at azurewebsites.net. So if we go back to Insomnia, and we can change this. Instead of going to localhost 7071, let's go to function sample azurewebsites.net API hello. We're going to pass in name and Jonathan. Now we're going to click send, but I warn that sometimes there's a bit of time for the first time this function is called, so we may not get a response straight away. Sometimes the cold start on on a newly deployed deployed service can take a few seconds. But I assure you once it's uh, up and running, it's a lot quicker than this. And there we go. We now have good day, sir Jonathan return from uh, Azure. And now we can say YouTube just to test that it's not hard code and it's working. And then you say, see straight away, good day sir, YouTube. Right, let's now just go back to our code one last time. And we're going to just say goodbye. Now we'll clean package and deploy that again to the cloud. So this time we're not going to run it locally. We're going to push it again to the cloud. 
and we'll see that it's a little bit quicker the second time around because we're no longer having to provision the whole Azure function service. We are simply updating it. So we're going to package it down into a zip file, we're going to upload it to the cloud, and Azure then is going to unzip that file and configure all the services that are required to use the latest code. So we can see there's four steps. It's now complete. Now let's switch over to Insomnia. And we're going to say everyone. We're saying goodbye everyone. And there you go. Goodbye everyone. All right, so that's been a really quick overview of using Java, Maven, the command line, to push Azure functions from your local machine and to test them on your local machine up into the cloud where they can be accessed to perform in whatever functions you require. In this case, we were just using HTTP triggers, but as I said, there's triggers for a lot of other things. And so serverless coding is really, really good if you're creating uh, glue code, the map between different web services, for example. So if you're a Java developer, there's no reason why you can't be using Azure functions to achieve this, and it's so cheap. Have a look on azure.com and work out what's right for you. Thanks.